happy Easter to you and yours wherever you are. Now, you may be saying to yourself right now, well, this isn't the chapel of the dining room, Father Michael, and you would be absolutely right. We decided after doing some talking that we wanted you to have something more than just a silly priest reading morning prayer from his dining room table on Easter morning. So we have pre-recorded this service, done some creative editing so that more people can be involved in this Easter Sunday service because we thought that you deserved to have a little bit of fun and you deserve to have something special for this Easter Sunday. So all that being said, this may seem a little bit disjointed, but at the end of the day, that tomb is still empty. This is still Easter Sunday and the joy is still with us. So settle in and we will begin. For those of you at home who have your service leaflet, you can follow along the service with that. And for those of you who have a Book of Common Prayer, the service of morning prayer begins on page 75 of the prayer book. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Alleluia. Our Easter canticle is Christ our Passover, and that is found on page 83, and we will say this together. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he dies, he dies to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Our psalm for today is taken from Psalm 118, and we will say this together. Give thanks to the Lord, for, for he, he is good. good. His, his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me surely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Of the apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah, is found on page 87 of the prayer book, and we will say this together. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. 
but over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Canticle 20, the Gloria, is found on page 94, and we will say this together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing snow as white. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said, Come, see the place where he lay, and then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. And so they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. And happy Easter. It feels good to say Alleluia again. You know, for most of us, Easter Sunday is one of the happiest days of the entire year. Now, usually the pews at St. Luke's Church are packed with Christians and their new Easter finery, and everyone has a smile on their face, especially the priest, who loves nothing more than to see the church filled to overflowing. On Easter Sunday, as Garrison Keeler might say, all the women are strong, all the men are handsome, 
and all of the children are above average. And on Easter Sunday, everyone and everything is just absolutely perfect because the world is absolutely perfect, right? Well, maybe not. For one thing, if this Easter were perfect, I probably wouldn't be preaching to you from my dining room table. But this is not a normal Easter Sunday. I'm not standing in front of you at St. Luke's Church. You are all watching this Easter service from your homes on electronic devices. And I suspect that many of us are feeling a little out of sorts this morning, as we all wish that we were in, in our church to celebrate the Feast of the Resurrection. And if that is the case, if you're feeling a little out of sorts, it's okay. I'm right there with you. Truth be known, I, I have had a little experience feeling out of sorts for Easter. Six years ago, my family and I actually moved on Easter Sunday. And I'm here to tell you, we were a hot mess that day. Now, in addition to just being elected rector of St. Mark's Church in West Hampton Beach, I had also undergone open heart surgery just eight weeks before our move, and I was still nowhere near 100%. Three weeks before our move was my last Sunday as rector of St. Paul's in Glencove. And we said our tearful goodbye, goodbyes to the wonderful people there. And then on Holy Saturday, the day before Easter, a moving company came to pack up our belongings and we were left in that great big empty rectory in Glen Cove for one last night. And so on Easter Sunday, we got up and we decided to go worship at the cathedral in Garden City. But even that didn't feel quite right. That wasn't our church. And aside from the bishop, we didn't know a soul there. And then to make matters worse, our Easter dinner plans with friends were canceled because of a death in their family. And so instead, there we were, eating our Easter dinner in a diner on Glen Cove Road. And I was back to the rectory to pick up any odds and ends that were left. And we packed our Subaru to the brim. We even had one of those obnoxious car toppers on the top of the Subaru. And we drove out of Glen Cove looking like Clark Griswold and family from National Lampoon's Family Vacation. And of course, of course, it was raining cats and dogs. All things considered, I'd say we were more than just a little bit out of sorts for that Easter Sunday and feeling just a little bit less than average. But you know, being out of sorts on Easter Sunday is nothing new. And as we were reminded in our gospel reading for today, everyone, everyone involved with the very first Easter were completely out of sorts as well. Now we're told that the two Marys, Mary the mother of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, they are coming to the tomb on that morning of the first day. And they are full of grief because of Jesus' brutal and humiliating death on the cross. And that grief turns to alarm with the, with the coming of a sudden earthquake. And as an angel descends from heaven and rolls back the stone at the entrance of the tomb and then plops himself right on top of the stone. And the angel's, the angel's appearance is striking. And he is clothed completely in white. As a matter of fact, the angel is so terrifying that the men guarding the tomb, they faint dead away. Everyone 
is completely out of sorts. But the angel says to the women, don't be afraid. Jesus is not here. Jesus is risen. Jesus is alive. So you go tell the disciples this good news. And you will see Jesus. And then suddenly, the women are not so out of sorts anymore. They are filled with joy, and they leave the tomb to go and tell the disciples the good news. But not before they see Jesus for themselves. Jesus is alive. And he greets them. And then they fall at Jesus' feet, and they worship him. They started out the day completely out of sorts, but now they are brimming with the good news of Christ's resurrection. And folks, that is some very good news for all of us as well, because it doesn't matter where we are worshiping or what is going on in the world around us. That empty tomb on Easter Sunday, it changes everything. It means that the old rules, they don't apply anymore. It means that the death is not the end for Jesus, or for any of us for that matter. It means that no matter else, no matter what else is going on in our lives, for better, for worse, we can rest assured that in the end, God's love wins. And we don't have to pretend that we have perfect lives. And let's be honest, right now we don't. We all wish we were in our church today. We all wish that we could shake hands and hug our friends today. We all wish that we could gather with extended families for Easter dinner today. And we all wish that we could have a world that wasn't filled with death in the grips of a global pandemic with thousands of good people losing their lives. Let's be honest. We're all a little bit of a hot mess right now myself included. But none of that matters on Easter Sunday because Jesus is alive. He is risen. Can you feel it in the air? Can you feel the joy as Jesus greets the two Marys and they, and they worship him? Folks, that empty tomb, it changes everything. Now, we might not have it perfect on this Easter Sunday. We might not feel perfect. We might even feel completely out of sorts this morning. And that's okay. Because the miracle of Easter can touch all of us no matter where we are and what we are going through. That empty tomb is bigger than all of us. It's bigger than social distancing, a global pandemic, and a sinking economy. It's bigger than how we feel, because on Easter Sunday, we greet the one whose resurrection says that this is not the end. There is more to the story. And joy comes in the morning. Now, just in case you're wondering, that Easter Sunday all those years ago had a happy ending as well. After stopping at Walmart for a, a couple necessities, we drove into West Hampton Beach on that cold and rainy Easter morning. Actually, it was afternoon by that time. And we moved into the rectory, which was now piled high with boxes everywhere. 
and there was a wonderful gift waiting there for us. In the living room was a banner that stretched across all the boxes that read, Welcome, Ralph family. And that banner was made by the children of St. Mark's Church. And in the end, we had five years of wonderful ministry with the people of St. Mark's and the rest of West Hampton Beach. And that is just a tiny chapter of our life, a life that has led us to all of you at St. Luke's Church in Granville. I am here in this place at this time talking to you because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That empty tomb means that the faith of the disciples did not end with a death on the cross. There was joy in the morning of that first Easter. And there was joy in that cold and rainy Easter all those years ago. And there is joy on this Easter morning as well. We are not in church today. We are the church today. And make no mistake about it, we are together in spirit and in faith. And there are no people that I would rather be serving than all of you. So happy Easter, St. Luke's. That tomb is still empty. And our story as a church and as a community of faith is still being written. And despite the social distance between all of us, I am so proud and so happy to be your priest. Joy comes in the morning. And this is the morning of the first day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, and amen. <clears throat> Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed on page 96. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. 
nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from death, of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your Holy Church that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God and glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray now for our own needs and those of others. From our parish prayer list, we remember Murphy Davis, Andy Reinhardt, Harriet Stone, Doug Bolden, Walter Preston, Bill Holland, Sherry Holland, Ron Santoni, Pam Rayner, John Hurdle, and Laura Hurdle. We remember especially our first responders, those working in healthcare, and people everywhere who are lonely, and people making difficult decisions. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, and all truth with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is an error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who places solitary persons and families, we commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech you, every root of bitterness, the desire of vain glory, the pride of life, Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, and godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who, in marriage, have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children, and the hearts of the children to the parents, and so enkindle fervent charity among us all, that we may evermore be kindly one to another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now let us say together the general thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, 
give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly and thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time. On behalf of the wardens and the vestry here at St. Luke's, I would like to wish you and yours a very happy Easter to you wherever you find yourself today. I'd also like to say thank you to the many people who helped to make this service possible. I'd like to say thank you to our lay readers. I'd like to say thank you to our wardens for their messages to you. I'd like to say thank you to my staff, all who helped to put this service together, Laura, Dagby, uh, our Minister of Music, Steve, and for his many contributions during the course of this Holy Week, our guest organist, Mr. Jeff McConaughey, thank you so much, and a very special thank you to the person holding his iPhone right now, Mr. Brandon Wilson, who has been so invaluable in helping to make this Holy Week possible for you. Are the dwelling place of the Most High. Be alert and be silent, for God is a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.